In 2010, we became a 501c3. Our focus is in food security, energy security, and um, restorative agriculture to create sustainability for uh, the future of our island. We call Molokai Nui Ahina the great child of the goddess Hina. Molokai Pule O'o of the potent and ripened prayers. Molokai Aina Momona. When we look at the land producing so much food, that was our legacy. When you look at the terraces on the land that captured water and allowed the water to soak into the landscape and create springs further below that fed fish ponds, it really indicates tremendous knowledge of our ancestors and a forward thinking that these systems wouldn't be just enough to feed the people that were living at that time, but for many generations yet unborn. So with that spirit, Sustainable Molokai is moving forward, bringing the best of our modern technology and strategies with the essence of our cultural values, ethics, and knowledge. We're at Molokai High School campus, and one of the first things that we started with them is basically rather than a traditional um, current day model for agriculture, we wanted to implement an agroforestry template. The bamboo is for windbreak and fiber. The milo is for hardwood. Asparagus, tomatoes, sweet potato, and bananas, all in this one small area. You have a windbreak, you have a water catchment, you have a food harvest system. You've got ground cover, you've got the food product. Down. You just pull the tail to the side so it don't squash. Okay. Saw that. There's about 104 seventh graders that I rotate once a week down into the high school gardens and that we've incorporated up at our middle school garden beds. So many things that it, it's taught the students how to work with a, a garden, raise their own vegetables. <laughs> As the most isolated place on earth, Hawaii imports roughly 90% of its food. We need to be supporting our farmers, our local farmers. We need to be looking at some of the limiting factors for, for them in terms of feeding the people here. So part of that vision is the food hub. And the great thing about food hubs is that they're really community focused. Their whole purpose is to strengthen local regional food systems which is exactly what we're trying to do. So we're really fortunate to get funding from First Nations Development Institute earlier this year. We have spent the past seven, eight months uh, kind of looking into the specifics and the feasibility of an on-island distribution center. So one of the first things we did was to put together an agricultural assessment. What are the opportunities? What are the challenges? Uh, what can we do to make agriculture stronger on Molokai? So one thing that we've heard a lot from farmers is that, you know, they say, I'd love to grow I know I, I love growing, I just don't know what to grow or how much. Um, and so what we've done is put together a demand study. Hopefully that'll be a big asset and something that, you know, farmers can have something tangible. Oh, okay, I know the exact number um, and I know how often and I know somebody will sell it for me. Having a dependable market here on Molokai is really important as a farmer because we are such a small, small island and if our markets support our local farmers, and, and take in whatever crops we do have available and market those, it, it actually eliminates a lot of um, stress on our end. We can create economic development in a way that has those concepts of malama and aloha aina in there. Part of Sustainable Mokai's vision is to rebuild community, restore community, rebuild that aina momona and that resilience. Right now there's so much urgency in doing this work and helping to mitigate climate change and create food security and energy security. But together, I think we can do it. <laughs>